Number 27. A spray can is used until it is empty except for the propellant gas, which has a pressure of 1,344 torr at 23 degrees Celsius. If the can is thrown into a fire, which is the temperature of 475 degrees Celsius, what will be the pressure in the hot can? Okie dokie. So with these types of questions, especially when they're starting to give you pressure values, we got temperature values, we got another temperature, and they're looking for the pressure, what I like to do is I like to list out all of my knowns. So I try to find the ones that go together. Now, they said that we had a propellant gas, which had a pressure of 1,344 torr at 23 degrees Celsius. So these two values, this pressure, goes along with this temperature. So I'm going to say I have a P value. P stands for pressure, and my pressure is 1,344 torr. And then I have a corresponding temperature value. So I'll say I have temp of 23 degrees Celsius. So now they give me another temperature, right? And something different is happening. They're saying that we're throwing the can into a fire, and that's the new temperature. The new temperature is 475 degrees Celsius. At that temp, what will be the pressure? So these two things go together, right? If this is the temperature, what's going to be the pressure? So I have another T value at 475 degrees Celsius. And the question is asking for what is the pressure? So I like to put P equals question mark. This is what we're solving for. Now, as we get into this chapter, there's going to be a lot of different uh, gas equation formulas. So we have to be able to figure out which one we're going to use. Now, if they start giving you two like a set of pressure values, you have two different pressures and you have two different temp values, you got a set of temps, you're going to be using the combined gas law. That's how I know which formula to use. So in this case, I'm going to use this formula. The combined gas law has the two different sets. In this case, we got pressure and temperature, right? So it doesn't matter which one you say is the ones and which one you say is the twos. I'll just say maybe this is my first pressure and my first temp. So P1 and T1, and then this is my P2 and T2. Now, if you notice, we didn't say anything about volume and nothing about N, which is the moles of gas. If there is nothing stated, get rid of them. This is just a big ratio formula. So if you don't want to use units, you don't have to. So goodbye to the volume. Didn't say anything about volume. And I could get rid of the number of moles. And now I have a beautiful, whoa, what happened to that T? I have a much more beautiful formula and an easier formula to go on. And it's all because of my two units here. Pressure is on the top, temps on the bottom. It's a direct relationship. The only thing here, guys, is that if we're using this formula, the temperatures have to be in Kelvin, okay? All other units, the pressures... Could be any unit of pressure, tor, millimeters of mercury, ATM, even the volumes could be any unit. But the only unit that's standard, temperature, has to be in Kelvin, K. So I first have to convert these two into Kelvin. Well, what's the conversion from Celsius to Kelvin, right? Oh, well, we just add 273. Now, you could add the 273.15, but for, for me, I'm just going to simplify it and say it's plus 273. Your final answer shouldn't be uh, any much different. So let's get that Kelvin, right? So 23 plus 273, I get 296 Kelvin. And then for the other one, I have 475 plus 273. I get 7... 48 Kelvin. Now we're ready. So I'm going to plug in my values, my P1s, T1s, and P2T2s. So let's see. I have 1,344 divided by 298, 
when I start pl plugging into my equation, I don't put in the units anymore because I know that I'm working with the correct units. Now, T2 is going to be the 748. And now we just need to find out what P2 is. If you want to label it as X, that's fine with me. If you want to say it's P2, go right ahead. Looks like we're doing cross multiplication here. I like that. So basically 298 times X equals whatever these two multiplied together. 1344 times 748. I get roughly a big number. I'm not going to round because that's not my final answer. And then we just want to divide by 298. And then we get our answer. Okay. Uh, looks like here, if we're, you know, multiplying and dividing, probably we would need three sig figs. Um, so let's just cut it out here and say that my new pressure, my P2, is equal to 3.37 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3, third. And if the unit of pressure was in tor, that's the pressure unit here. So they have to just match. So you just found it in tor because the other pressure that you put it in was in tor as well. They didn't say specifically what unit we should use, so I'm just going to leave it in tor. But just make sure on a test or quiz, if they want ATM or any other pressure value, you got to convert. Okay? And this kind of makes sense. Remember, P and T are direct relationships. So if the temperature goes up, that means that the pressure has to go up. And this number is way higher than the pressure that it started with. So hopefully this makes sense. Thank you so much for viewing the video. If you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 15,000 subs, and that's all because of you guys. It also just helps, uh, you know, the, get the word out there that this YouTube channel exists. And we just want to help you guys out, all right? So the more, the more students we can help out, the better. Thank you so much, and I will see you in later lessons. Bye-bye.